Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dunbar Academy Mailbag. Uh, today's question is, what is treat and retreat? How does it work? And how did you develop it? Am I chump liver? No, you are a human being. My dad, Dr. Ian Dunbar. <laughs> and this is my son, Jamie. Thank but you. But they know that. Well, do they? It I don't could know. could be first time they've never heard of us before. Dunbar Academy, who's that? No, you're not chocolate. No, we're right. Um, treat and retreat, or as I originally called it, retreat and treat. Because I was all focusing on the retreat bit of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was focusing on the treat. And some people even called it, well, that's negative reinforcement. Which, of course, means nothing to so many people out there. Well, let's not confuse the people with that. So... Here we have a situation where a dog will only come a certain distance to us because he's scared. Um, mm -hmm. And we want him to, you know, enjoy life, including the people in it. So I have a routine that I just developed at, uh, on the spot, under duress. Uh, it was a, quite a serious biting dog. But this applies to all dogs um, who just are fearful of people. Mm -hmm. So I had two pockets. There was basic kibble in one, and I had freeze-dried liver treats in the other. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of pinned at the end of a hallway. And because the owners, I said, keep the dog on leash. Let me see it in the garden first. I wanted space. They let the dog out from the kitchen, and I'm in a hallway. The husband shuts the hallway door, goes in the dining room, and the lady shut the kitchen door. I said, what were they doing? So I said, hi, Mr. Akita. <laughs> so I reflexively put my hand in, in my pocket and threw a bit of kibble, mm -hmm. another bit of kibble, past the dog. So the dog had to retreat to stretch the distance between us. That that all of 100% of my experience and expertise were telling me, this dog is too close to you, Ian. He hasn't got the confidence for that. So kibble past the dog to get the dog to retreat and then hand in this pocket and liver, liver, liver as I back off. So now the distance between us is much greater. The dog retreated, I retreated, um, and so he turns around, I'm not such a threat, and as he comes towards me, treat, treat, treat. So this was basically a lure and reward training exercise to lure the dog to retreat, to get greater distance and lessen the stress, and then to lure and reward the dog for approaching me but I don't let him get to me I paid great a note to where he was and he, he was about three yards out mm -hmm. okay and I just knew this is it's too close if I took a step forward I could pierce the safety threshold the fight and flight distances which all animals have and so Akita uh, kibble he retreats treat 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 comes up and gets three treats as he approaches. Before he gets to me, another bit of kibble, stretch the distance. And then I toss the treats again between him and me. And we do this over and over. Um, after about half a dozen repetitions, you're dealing with a different dog. He's just approaching you much quicker. He's kind of jauntier. He's not this stiff-legged sort of standstill dog eyeballing you. And the only things that moves is his eyes you know, like this. So he's a total loose demeanor. So I was letting him come in closer and closer. But same thing, kibble for going away, treats for coming towards me. Mm -hmm. So we have that disparity in the food rewards there in terms of quantity and quality when the dog approaches. When the dog comes in closer, I drop the treats by my side. So, you know, why? For fearful dogs, I don't want to look at them. You know, they're fine. Then you look at them, or heaven forbid you reach for them, then they run away again. I just want to avoid all of that. Mm -hmm. So I dangle my hand. And now I just drop treats on the floor. But now I know I can do this. I, draw, I toss another piece of kibble. I think, well, let's do a nice long approach again. Mm -hmm. Then treat, treat, treat. You know, I find a lot of people when they're working with dogs, when they're progressively desensitizing, they're always working in one direction, trying to get the dog come a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, and they bring the dog too close, too quickly, and then they feed a treat from the hand, and oh, empty hand, and bam, you get bitten. Mm. So I keep going back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Dog's working in close, and I want to take a breather too, you know. I mean, <laughs> some of the dogs, I, I don't want to sneeze because they're so fearful, 
And if the dog were like nipping or something like that or biting, I, I don't want to stretch it to that point. So I send the dog back to step one again, kibble, and then maybe four treats between them because it's quite a distance. Now they're really coming up quickly and I'm happy with that because a quick recall is a really good sign. It's a very powerful temperament test, as is hanging around. So now I'm dropping them on the floor one after the other. Keep a lot in your hand so your hand is never empty. Refill it if you have to. Drop the treats. This is time to use a lot of treats in training. Mm -hmm. You've heard me a lot of times talk about, you know, uh, phase out your reliance on food treats so you know you have control of the dog when you don't have food in your hand or in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But this, no, you can never give too many treats here. And then I hold what the treat in my hand and the dog takes it and then another one, then another one. Then I toss the treat out again and um, now let him come and take it from my hand. Treat out, let him come and take it from my hand. Then I'll hold my hand higher and higher. So he's now coming in at sit level. So now it's come sit. So now I'm the one who does the retreating. I'll do it all around the living room, walking backwards or so around the one garden. One step back. One step back, come uh -huh. sit, treat. Another step back, come sit, treat. Come sit, treat, come sit, treat, come sit, treat. And it just builds so much confidence. And, you know, when I look at dogs today, you know, so many are fearful. And it's such a shame, I think, being scared of people because people are in your world. You can't avoid them. You can't go for walks without seeing people. You know, you can't um, go for walks without seeing dogs. Mm -hmm. And it is just such a shame, though, that, that, you know, they're scared of people. And so once you do it, I call it you're teaching the dog the training game. Now you invite other people to the house to do it. Like first your dogs, who are gonna be your dog's core group of people, people who regularly visit your house. So now they can start with, come here and sit. The dog knows the words, he knows their meaning, he knows the game. Come sit, treat, come sit, treat. And by doing, you don't have to do like a 20 yard recall, it's just a one step recall every time. Because every time you do it, the dog comes, good sign, sits, sticks around. You can tell next to everything through proximity. Will the dog come closer to you and will he stick close to you in close proximity? That's wonderful if he's off leash and of his own volition he does that. But then will he take a treat from your hand? That's an acid test. And we're doing it 25 times over. Mm -hmm. And so I'd invite a lot of people around now to hand feed the dog his kibble. We just need kibble. But it all starts with Retreat and treat, mm -hmm. or so you're not treat and putting retreat. Too much pressure on too quickly. You're trying to increase the distance. Right. You know, you've really got to be aware that if we, it was a wonderful sort of model people came up with in behavior, the flight and fight distances. And you can draw them around a dog. I had a wonderful little drawing I did of various dogs, and one had a little dog, and it had a great big circle. Mm -hmm. This is the flight distance. And if you cross over this distance, the dogs are going to move away mm -hmm. or run off. Inside it was a much smaller fight distance. Mm -hmm. If you cross that, he, he maybe bite you or attack you. But what if it's a child running now before they'd known it? They're through the flight distance. Dogs had, or what about this dog? And it was a single dog and it was um, a little brown dog and he had a dark black outline. And there was an arrow, two arrows pointing to the dark black outline. Flight distance, fight distance. This oh, dog oh. gives you no warning mm -hmm. that he's upset when you come closer. Mm -hmm. When you touch him. Mm -hmm. And you've penetrated he, both. He bites yes. you and then he runs off. Oh. A lot of Asian breeds are like that. That's why, you know, this started all with an Akita mm -hmm. who taught me so much so quickly. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Akita. You've helped out lots of dogs to build confidence so that they could now have fun with people instead yeah. of fearing them. And thank you, Dad, for your answer to this question. Thank you, and Jamie.
Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. It's a big thank you time out mm -hmm. there. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.